Hi, friends. Welcome to the Seek Holy Living podcast with Christus Faboda. I am a wife to my wonderful husband, mom to my five precious children, and a friend to some amazing moms that I can't wait to introduce to you. Mothering is not a journey meant to be traveled alone. Join me every Monday for a new podcast where you will find hope, joy, and purpose. Welcome back, ladies. I'm so excited that you can join us today as we share about reading aloud to our children. This is a topic that I am passionate about, and so are my guests. Returning today are my friends Wendy Tong and Rachel Wilson, both mothers of elementary age children who have so much to share during this conversation. Now, before we start, let me assure you that our show notes today will be full and will include all of the wonderful book titles and authors that are recommended in today's episode. So no need to put down that tea, stop folding the laundry, or pull the car over to take notes. Well, so fun to be able to be here together today. We've already just been enjoying talking about books even before we started. Rachel, I'm so glad you could come back. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. And Wendy, thank you so much for being here again, too. Yes, excited to talk with you about books. Thanks. I know. This is one we could just talk about forever. This could be like a whole day-long yes. podcast. Um, and it would be funny, Wendy, you told me your kids wish that they could be here and mm-hmm. be the ones to talk about it. I thought, wouldn't that be a funny conversation if we lined all of our kids up? To talk mm-hmm. about the books. Oh, the best book critics <laughs> ever. They, mm-hmm. I know. And I love that they would all be so excited to talk about it too. It's so sweet because we love it. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about reading aloud. What does reading aloud look like in our homes? I think it can look different in every home. And when someone hears the idea of reading aloud, that it could bring about completely different pictures. It's like that meme that has like the six different images mm-hmm. in it mm-hmm. of showing like what I think about, what other people think of. Mm-hmm. So w- give me like a window into your home. Wendy, why don't you start? What does it look like reading aloud in your home? Well, it varies from day to day, but I'll tell you what it was last night. <laughs> I was reading and my daughter, we had been apple picking. So my daughter was peeling apples to make a dessert while I was reading out loud. And my son had a crossbow, toy toy crossbow, and was (laughs) shooting targets while my daughter was peeling apples. And, but they were paying attention completely. And, you know, anytime I paused, they were like, okay, that's not it, right? One more chapter, right? (laughs) Right? So they're still very much engaged, but their hands are usually busy. Sometimes it's painting, sometimes it's Play-Doh, sometimes it's Legos, but they're, they're rarely snuggled up in my lap. It's not a a picture that's, you know, what you might naturally think of as read aloud time, maybe before you have children and you imagine what read aloud time looks like, but it's so much fun. And they're nearly 10 and eight, and they still are completely enthusiastic Mm -hmm. about this, this sacred time of our day every day. So that's beautiful. And when did you start reading aloud to them? When they were infants, actually, I have the funniest picture of my my son when he was probably just a few months old and my husband was reading a brain anatomy textbook to him. <laughs> Light reading. <laughs> Light reading. He was staring at this picture and you see in the picture a picture of an actual brain and the textbook and my husband's reading it to him and my son is looking at it very oddly. But we've been reading <laughs> to them since the very beginning. I think when they're small, it really it's it's more about your voice and the comfort of being held mm. and just the warmth of being together. The the material is is an added bonus, but the time being together and sharing with with mom or dad or whatever adult is is present is really the the actual gift. Yes, yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Rachel, what does reading aloud look like in your home? Well we also started very young and I was thinking about it. I read something that you're supposed to read to them when they're in the womb. So uh-huh. <laughs> I totally did that. Like the first time parent, like reading a book when Gideon was in my womb. So yeah. I definitely started early, but then when they're kids, little babies, I was reading to them and sometimes they were eating the books, but mm-hmm. I still yes. kept reading them and we found books that were more edible. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but what we like to do now, now that they're in school is actually after we're done with school, it's kind of a treat. And we do all cuddle up on the couch Mm -hmm. and we do read, but there are a lot of busy hands as well. We're doing um, Legos and, you know, more quiet things, Mm -hmm. but we look forward to the afternoons and they do also beg, 
can we just do one more, just one more? Mm -hmm. So um, I've been getting really tired lately because of the, you know, the new school year. And so I've even been doing it on Audible, but Mm -hmm. we're still all sitting in the room and we still have the book because some of the books have pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, I've been also doing that too, Mm -hmm. to save my voice. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember one of the first times that we were having We do reading aloud as part of our um, history Mm -hmm. and literature that we do for school. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the times when I was reading one of our books and um, my husband was home that day and he was watching and the kids were doing, I'm sure one was doing, I think, Tinker Toys and one was doing Legos or Magnet Tiles or Mm Play-Doh or one of those kinds of busy with your hands, Mm -hmm. but like quiet with your mouth and body Mm -hmm. kind of activities. And um, later he like was just like watching and later he meant he said something to me about like, have you seen that like, they're all like doing things though while you're reading. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh yes, that's very intentional. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This is not just an accident. Mm -hmm. But to explain that that really is a, it's a very different way of of listening Mm -hmm. and of learning and keeping busy while Mm -hmm. still being, um, still being active and engaged yeah Mm -hmm. but then also so it can look like that but then I also I have one child who really has been hungry for some one-on-one time more lately Mm -hmm. and so sometimes in the mornings we've been having time where she'll come in and we'll just read a book together and this morning she I I gave her the choice I said do you want a book that you pick out and read or one that maybe I pick out that you've never heard she's like one I've never heard Mm -hmm. so we sat in the chair together just the two of us and read the story and it was like so life-giving for her and it took what like four Mm -hmm. minutes Mm -hmm. to read that Mm -hmm. picture book so it can look you know lots of different ways and you mentioned audiobooks Mm -hmm. that's another way that it can look Mm -hmm. even when we're doing car rides sometimes we'll have books downloaded and which doesn't always work with little children, having a two-year-old now, she'll know. She'll be like, no, listen to whatever the book is. <laughs> um, all she wants to sing is let it go all the time, which no one else wants to. But So it doesn't always work in every family. But the option of audiobooks in the car, too. Yeah, um, and I wanted to mention something, too. Because um, my husband noticed how much my kids were cher- cherishing these times. And he's like, I don't want to read a book to the kids. Aww. And so before bed, they've gone through maybe three books like adventure books that he loved. Mm -hmm. And so they do that before bed, um, you know, when they remember and Mm -hmm. as we're like going through books. And so the little one definitely does not go and, you know, join in on that, but the two older ones. So they are eight and nine. Those two like love to read with dad too at night. That's really neat. Um, And were you read aloud to as a child? Just in snippets, not like we do now. (laughs) I remember it was very... You know, there would be like a bedtime story, but not a cons- not so consistently. Mm-hmm. But I do remember they were they were precious memories mm-hmm. because they were probably a little more irregular. But yeah. the more I became a parent, you know, or the more once I had children and started yes. researching actually the benefits of it, it was like, well, this is a no brainer because I mean, even when I before I was a parent and I was an aunt, I remember my nephew, he and my niece, they would just love to come over to my house because I started had already started collecting books to read to them Mm -hmm. and by the time I was pregnant with my first instead of requesting clothes and things like that I said if everybody could bring the children's book that was their favorite when they were a Mm -hmm. child as as your gift I would love to have a, a start out a great little collection for my children with books that might not be the typical you know, thing that's on the front of the the bookstore right now, the window. So if you could bring your book, that was your favorite as a child. And it's been wonderful because you get such a variety when you ask other people what what they enjoyed as a child. Yeah. And Rachel, were you read too as a child? I actually was. My mom is like a bookworm and I always saw her as that. And I'm like, man, she's like so obsessed with books and (laughs) reading. And I didn't like reading myself as a child. But I loved when my mom read to me. And then as I even got into high school and I was required to read so many books, I got them. It was books on tape. Remember cassette oh, yeah. tapes? Yeah, I remember those. And so I still call I Audible listened, books on tape. <laughs> I listened to books. And that's how I got through assignments um, mm-hmm. then because I did love listening to books. That's mm-hmm. cool. Okay, Wendy, you talked about the value of reading and how mm-hmm. important it is. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Mm. What are the benefits that you see to reading aloud? Oh, goodness. There's, I think, for one, just giving kids a broader vocabulary to be mm-hmm. able to express their emotions is is huge. I mean, if they have a wide range of expressing different things that they're feeling, 
it just opens the door to be under to feel like they're understood and mm-hmm. that they can connect more and that they can handle various emotions in a, in a much more mature way. I think a lot of times when kids don't have the vocabulary to handle emotions, it, it causes them to lash out. That's, you know, you see outbursts, you see anger, you see tears, all of these things because they're feel, you know, children feel the same emotions that adults feel, but adults have learned the coping skills of, you know, what's appropriate socially or what's not, or the vocabulary to be able to express those types of feelings or thoughts. But children, their vocabulary is a lot more limited, but when we read them great books, they learn and they can identify with what a character is going so much more Mm -hmm. clearly because that becomes like their whole world. And so it makes it a lot easier to be able to talk about a character as a third person. And that way they can incorporate it and they can understand, they can, their own maturity rises to that, that level of that character in that book and their empathy grows. And so when something similar or a similar experience that causes a similar emotion occurs, they now have the vocabulary to be able to express it. Whereas Mm -hmm. if they hadn't read that book or heard that book, then it would be a whole new feeling, a whole lot more frustration, a whole lot more outbursts. But when you give kids these books, it broadens their view of the world and it gives them the tools to be able to to understand a helpful way to cope and even a wrong way to cope sometimes or a dangerous way to cope. Like you see good decisions made, you see bad decisions Mm -hmm. made. And we can talk about all of those in a safe way when it's a book. It's non-threatening. It's totally Mm -hmm. non-threatening. Yeah. So. And it's low risk, which is interesting. You can't have long-term negative consequences from reading a story of something that someone went through or a choice that they made. Whereas in your own life, you can, and it's not a conversation about someone personally in Mm -hmm. your life Mm -hmm. where there are emotions attached Mm -hmm. or protections that have to be kept there because it's a character in a story that that happened with. Exactly. It's it's such a great education. I mean. And I think it's so inspiring too Mm -hmm. when they see those things. Mm -hmm. and hear those things to realize, wow, that person did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That otherwise they they would never know. Exactly. I always think of the C.S. Lewis quote, and I'm going to totally butcher it, but it was (laughs) something along the lines of, you know, we know that there's there's danger and evil in the world, so let's let's let kids know that there's valiant heroes and brave Mm -hmm. knights so that those those things, when they face them in real life, they've already had some mental emotional experience of bravery of fighting the evil of fighting the bad and yeah. seeing overcoming you know being over being an overcomer and identifying it just it's all of the things that we want for our children and it teaches them in such bite-sized pieces that it's like it's a feast yes, yes. oh i love that it's true rachel what are some of the benefits that you see to reading aloud well i definitely agree with wendy about all of that and to kind of elaborate on that too, just the vocabulary that they learn. and Like the actual words, not just yes. the emotional vocabulary. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. exactly. The words that they can learn. Mm-hmm. And I'm even still learning words because we'll come across a word and I'm like, we need to look this up. Yep. Mom needs to learn. And so I love that aspect of it that like mom's still learning, mom's reading, she's enjoying it. And I'm being that example to them. Mm-hmm. But another thing that I've noticed that it's done for us is relationally. Mm -hmm. So um, in the summertime when we weren't reading as much, I was like craving that closeness of us, you know, sitting on the couch or being in a room, reading a good book together. And there's just like that relational bond that is formed as you're reading to your kids. And I think that's been my favorite so far. Mm -hmm. Because like academics will come, but that relationship and this time with your child is so precious. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have them for what, 18 years? And it's like, you can, you know, flourish it even more by reading with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love watching how the books um, bond them and us together too, Mm -hmm. aside from just the time that we have together, but the characters that we're learning Mm -hmm. about together and the way that we talk about it and the way that they interact, that, um, there's a quote about Mr. Rogers about play being their learning Mm -hmm. or not about by Mr. Rogers. Um, and I watch them take the things we're reading about and put it into their play Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. they begin pretending that Mm -hmm. or they decide because we were reading Island of the Blue Dolphins that they're going to learn how to draw dolphins Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. that they're going to, you know, create something outside based on the things that they were reading about. 
And I think I remember back when we did um, Rachel's mm. kids and our kids, we read the trumpet of the swan at the same time. And we went and we found a swan mm-hmm. and their faces when they saw this swan, like if we had never read the book and we had just drawn up to this place with a swan, they mm-hmm. would have been like, okay, swan, cool. but Big they white bird. were mm-hmm. elated mm-hmm. and just seeing that spark of excitement. And I was also read aloud to as a child, um, a lot. And I was the oldest of four. So I got to a point in high school and when I moved to college that I needed to not sit and be a part of the read alouds for as long anymore (laughs) because I had other responsibilities. You know, Mm -hmm. I had maybe a babysitting job to go to or a college class to take or I grew up. And the rest of the kids had this time together that they were forming these relationships over books and they'd make jokes about them. Mm -hmm. And I felt so left out. It was so Mm. sad because they had these... (gasps) The inside jokes. Yes, the inside jokes and these Mm -hmm. characters that bonded them Mm -hmm. that they were naming pets after for our family. (laughs) And I was like, I don't even know who this pet's named after. (laughs) Um, It's just so special. It's so, so special. Yes. Um, Okay, so what do you have to put aside to prioritize the reading aloud in your home? Because it doesn't, the time doesn't come free. Mm. You want to start, Wendy? Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's it's tricky. I think as my kids have gotten older, it's been more of an effort sometimes because we do feel the pressure of other other subjects that need to be looked into and studied and those types of things. But thankfully, the coronavirus pandemic has mm-hmm. created a lot more open space for, well, you're not doing you know, you're not doing kendo, you're not doing yeah. basketball, you're not doing gymnastics, you're not doing art class, you're, I mean, all the things that normally suck away time become not even an option. Right. And so we've been able to really focus on the essentials of what we actually value most. And reading aloud together has definitely risen to the surface of one of the, the high mm-hmm. priorities that we really, we look back over you know, over the last several months. And we don't, I don't think my children will look back at it as a time of like, oh, the pandemic, you know, coronavirus 2020, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, like, oh, that's when we read this book and that's when we read that book and we had yeah. that adventure. And we've, mm-hmm. a lot of times we follow up different books that we have read with adventures that go along with those stories mm-hmm. somewhat, you know, which also has been somewhat limiting during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. but there's still a lot of options and creativity and even meals that mm-hmm. we can tweak to reflect a book. I mean, mm-hmm. our mission right now is finding Turkish delight because we uh. just finished The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which we've read so many times before, but great books, they never get old. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you can reread and reread. And so we can find a, a restaurant, you know, that has Turkish delight and we're gonna have Turkish delight. And the so kids are fun. so excited about Turkish delight, you yeah. know. <laughs> So there's there's a lot of options for prioritizing, and thankfully during difficult times, I think the things that you want to spend time with, you will make happen. Yes. So it becomes what your priority really needs to be, yeah, or want what you want for your family if it is a priority or not. Yeah, I think you're right. I've heard someone say you prioritize what's important, mm-hmm. and so if we schedule it in, it's important, then mm-hmm. we're going to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you guys, Rachel? That's exactly so, what yeah. we do. It's just part of the schedule. So. Mm-hmm. It's just like almost like another subject on the day that we're doing or um, another activity, you know, like you schedule in your workout or your morning coffee. No one has to schedule their morning coffee. Now. Okay. But, you know, you, you get to that point where it becomes a routine yes. if you actually schedule it. Yep. And it's like it doesn't have to be Monday through Fridays because there might be that day you go to jujitsu. But, um, you know, we do it on Monday, Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And mm-hmm. then the kids start to look forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's give some tangible help to the mom who hasn't read aloud to her children before. Um, how would you encourage her if she's never done that and thinks, okay, well, I guess I could try, but like my kids are going to be like, okay, this is lame. Mom's reading to us. Mm. What would you say? Rachel, you want to start with that one? Yeah, sure. So basically, I like to make an adventure out of it as well, just like mm-hmm. you said. And I was like, oh, we do the same thing. <laughs> so... Um, I'm trying to think. So like we were talking about with the trumpet of the swan, um, you know, making sure that there's some kind of field trip to look forward to, or it might be a movie, you Mm -hmm. know, watching the movie Mm -hmm. at the end or some snack, like you Mm -hmm. were saying. So 
I kind of like to think of it as a whole book and you know, think about that first. So I tell the kids, after we read this book, we're going to do this. Mm. And so all I think you just got to do is just start and, yeah. you know, pick a book that you loved as a kid or one of the books that we're recommending here and just go with it. Mm-hmm. And Wendy, how would you recommend that someone like find a good book? Do you have any, if a yeah. mom doesn't really know where to start? Yeah. Um, you know, normally I would say sometimes your local bookstores are a great place. Most of them are closed now here, Mm -hmm. but even, um, talking to friends, I think is always a great start because if you have friends who have kids of a similar age, just asking them, what, what do your kids enjoy reading? If, especially if you know that they're readers or even just looking online and being like, what's the best selling book right now for seven to eight year olds? Or Common Common Sense Reads is a website that has recommendations and gives backgrounds as far as like what um, things to watch out for that mm-hmm. might be age appropriate or inappropriate. Um, Read Aloud Revival, I love that website. You plug in what you know a few questions about the age of your child, what types of things they might be interested in, and it'll generate a list of recommendations. I mean, even once and once you start knowing what your kid enjoys. You, you can go to a store and or online and find stuff fairly, fairly quickly. There's, I mean, there's just so many great books out there. There's so many. I feel mm-hmm. like that's the great thing with books. There's no shortage. Yeah. And even right now with the library, librarians are a great resource. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people forget about them. And yeah. those are free. Even right now, our libraries are, are closed, but we can order online and they set them in a bag and we can go to the door and everybody's all covered up and <laughs> we can get books that way. There's a, a lot of great options out there. You just yeah. gotta do a little, a little, little bit of research, so. Yeah. I think that's great advice, so I would agree. We need to sell them on the book mm-hmm. and then we also need to pick good books mm-hmm. because there are books that are not good quality mm-hmm. literature. Mm-hmm. And it's not like they have to be reading like deep sure. quality <laughs> literature. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't have to all be, you know. Shakespeare. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, we're not reading mm-hmm. War and Peace mm-hmm. to a five-year-old. We're not there mm-hmm. yet. No, mm-hmm. but <laughs> there is a really big difference between books that are, you know, all just silly and light and fluffy versus stories that have rich mm. meaning. So let's share some rich meaning books for the last little while here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will go ahead and give a little plug too, because talking about where can you find good books, I am going to over the month of December, because we're like right jumping into December, just right around the corner here. I'm going to be sharing on my Instagram feed different books that you should have for your family in your home at Christmas. So I will do one every few days, um, a post with another book that you can go ahead and just grab off Amazon because everyone should have good books going into Christmas. Amen. So let's talk about Christmas <laughs> or books. So any recommendations, whether they be Christmas or non, for a little one? We'll start with little children and I'm going to let you guys just kind of go for it. So Rach, you want to start okay, with books yeah. for little ones? Yeah, basically um, some of the books that we've really liked are books with really um, kind of like vibrant like pictures mm-hmm. and I like to get board books for the little ones. So they're actually made with like thick cardboard, yeah. you know? So what are your favorite board books? For yeah. Little? So the one is actually Babies Everywhere. I love so that. Or no, Everywhere Babies actually. And it's written by Susan Myers. And I love all the different pictures and like different types of people and sizes and shapes and colors. And I just, they, my kids love that book. Mm-hmm. And so that's like my recommendation for Littles. Our favorite one. And what about you for Littles, Wendy? Um, Moo and Ba and Farm. There are these huge board books that have a lot of tactile mm. action. Um, also the Scanimation books. They're black mm. and white and you turn the page and the picture moves. Mm. Yes. And my kids mm. love right those. those. They still pull those out occasionally, yeah. you know, just because they're like, how does that work? You know, yes. and they want to take apart the book. I'm like, don't take apart don't the take book. <laughs> and I think for Littles, my recommendation would be anything by Sandra Boynton. Oh, yeah. Her books mm-hmm. are so sweet. I can just like quote them all right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've loved those. So That's for Littles, true. for sure. What about picture books, Rachel? Mm. So picture books, I like them with adventures in them. And so my top two are Rocks of Oxen by Alice McLaren. I love that they come up with this like, you know, fanciful city and it's just like all the imagination in it. I love it. And then The Raft too, which is another one about like imagination. And 
Um, that one's by Jim. I'm not actually how, sure how to say the last name. LaMarche. I'll have it in the so, show notes though. That's a okay. great one too. Yeah. I love that because it's more than just a picture book and like a mom usually has to read it because mm-hmm. it is kind of a lot of words, but the pictures and the illustrations are incredible. That's and they're both such, ins- they both inspire such play. Both of mm-hmm. those books do. What about you, Wendy, for picture books? Um, you know, I always think of Jan Brett. I love mm-hmm. the pictures in that as well. They're just all the details and they have the sidebars of the <coughs> pictures as well, showing <coughs> upcoming scenes in the book. It gives you little glimpses. Um, all the Dr. Seuss bo- books, they're so simple, but you know, just that rollicking rhythm and the silly stories and the rhythms are fun and they're easily memorized for the kids. Um, Good Night Construction Site. Mm-hmm. My so son had those books completely memorized. And, you know, when they're not old enough to really even talk and they've already got these books. My yes. daughters love all of those as well. Yes. They're so sweet. They're so sweet. And, yeah, they just create this great vocabulary and this great bonding. And I never will give those books away because they're such sweet little memories. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's talk chapter books. So you guys both are like real lovers of chapter books. So why don't you both share a couple of your favorite chapter books okay. or authors? I know you brought some author lists that really anything would be great. By yeah. Then. So I definitely like E.B. White. That's the Trump of the Swan, but Charlotte's mm-hmm. Web. Mm-hmm. And these are great ones that you do have like movies at the end or you can go to a farm or, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like such real life. And I think those are good starting places for books. If people haven't read a chapter book before, Mm -hmm. either of those are very friendly starting places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I love um, Beverly Cleary. Um, Those are classics. Mm -hmm. Mouse and the Motorcycle was one of my kids' favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they have a great movie that has like little like claymation or I don't know what it is, but it's really cute. Cute. It's really old school, but fun. And then the last one I want to mention is S.D. Smith because even though it's not a classic, what does he say? He says it's like... It's a new it's story with an old soul. soul. Yeah. Oh, it's so the underdog, it's so and it's a whole series. So that Green Ember series, you have mm-hmm. to look that one up. Mm-hmm. He's just coming out with a new one, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. uh, the audio version of that is exceptional so too. Mm-hmm. So if the reading aloud, feels that's the like, one I got. Oh, I don't know if I have the time, because the different like you know um, narration and the sounds mm-hmm. and yeah, I love it. It's yeah. beautiful. We so inspirational. Yeah, and I love it just as much as my kids, I think. <laughs> and they all really I want to know what's happening yes. next. Mm-hmm. Wendy, chapter books. Yes, I totally agree with all those recommendations. <laughs> okay. I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> um, along that same vein, um, the Laura Ingalls Wilder books. Yes. The whole series we've read. But Farmer Boy is still my kids' favorites. It's just so funny, you know. They they still quote it. And we reread it. And then we listen to audio of it as well mm-hmm. as, you know, just around the house during the day. Um, One of the newer books was the Wild Robot books. And this is the second one of the Wild Robot Escapes. And I actually liked the second book better than the first. Usually Mm. we're not a fan of the sequels. Sometimes we are, like the Mm -hmm. S.D. Smith's books, the Green Ember books. Mm -hmm. Um, But the Wild Robot Escapes, great conversation, such deep, good meaning. Um, another one that was great for read aloud was Emmy and the Incredible Shrinking Rat. Mm. Sounds very girl like, but it was hilarious. And my son and my daughter both found it absolutely hilarious every single night. Please read more, please, please, please. Um, another one, Journey to America. I hadn't read this one growing up, but it's just had its 50th anniversary. Oh. And it was based on the author's um, own family and her family fled Europe during the Holocaust. And it was about the story of this um, girl and her sisters and her, her parents fleeing to America. Um, really powerful. My, my daughter keeps rereading this story and it's just, it's a powerful way to learn history. In a yes. Safe That's what I was gonna say. I forgot to mention, I love how you can have history like yes. where it's like historical fiction that brings that in. And so mm-hmm. not only are you learning about life and all this, but his, it makes history so much more real. So mm-hmm. much more, so much more. I agree. It's, yeah, there's so many great things. I mean, mm-hmm. gosh, I, I- We could just go on. I, I, on actually, on. I, I, go. I know, I have to wrap it up. Yeah. But we could, we could just sit and talk for longer. So here's what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to, because you have more that are great books that I want to make sure people see. So nice. I'm going to share a picture though of your, um, these books with you and some links so people can see what other books you would recommend. And we'll put all these books in the show notes. It's going to be a busy show notes for this episode. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you for having having us. us. So fun. This was great. Thank you. I had such a good time talking about reading aloud to our children. 
I hope that you were inspired by Wendy and Rachel's passion for this topic and able to glean from their experiences. I want to highlight a couple of quotes from today that will encourage you to value and prioritize reading time with your children beyond just a way to pass the time, learn history, or reinforce morals. C.S. Lewis said, Since it is so likely that children will meet cruel enemies, let them at least have heard of brave knights and heroic courage. When you read good books to your children, it rouses hope and courage in their hearts. The second quote is from Fred Rogers. Play is often talked about as if it were a relief from serious learning. But for children, play is serious learning. Play is really the work of childhood. Great literature with its worlds and characters opens up a child's imagination and encourages play. In that playtime, they learn lessons for which there is no textbook. If you and your family are ready to start your read aloud journey, this is a wonderful time to start. Through December, I will recommend a Christmas book for you every day of the month. You can find my daily posts on social media and my Instagram highlight titled books. If you haven't already, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, and please share some of your family's favorite read alouds. The literature that you and your children treasure can be an encouragement to other moms and their kids. So please join us in this conversation and be sure to tag another read aloud book loving mom. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any of our weekly conversations. And check out our show notes below where I have links to the resources mentioned on the podcast. I release a new podcast every Monday and additional content at seekholyliving.com, including a video of this conversation and a deeper dive into all things mom. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Seek Holy Living for more fun and conversation. If this was an encouragement to you, please share it with your friends. And join us next week as we prepare our homes for Christmas.